This tutorial is sponsored by EnvironmentTextures.com, high quality images for 3D artists and game developers. Okay, so what we need to do now that the low poly is complete is UV map it. Oh, no one likes UV mapping, but I think if we work together, we can get through it. So we're going to map different parts of this um, at a time. So let's just get into face mode and we'll select all these faces that go around like that. How have I selected the bottom? I didn't want to do that. Okay, let's just get the selection in this view. Okay, so I just want those faces around the side, first of all. And then we're going to go to, I'll open my UV editor so I can see what I'm working with. Okay, and can I just make that a little bit more visible? What does that do? Yeah, that'll help. Okay. So we're going to click on UV and we're going to do a cylindrical map because, you know, we're working on a cylinder. That makes sense. And we'll click on that. And that actually looks very clean. We don't need to do anything else to that. That just worked. So I'm just going to move that up out of the way for a minute. I'm pretty darn happy with that. Next thing is to do some other bits and bobs. So let's go back into this face mode and I want that ring there. And I'm going to UV map this one with a planar projection on the Y axis. And that's just that bit there. So let's move that over there. And I want the one on the bottom as well. And we'll just perform the same sort of projection on that. And move that one up out of the way so I know that they go together. Okay, whilst I'm working on the top and bottom, I'll get this one here done. Beautiful. And that's going to be on the y axis as well. So I can go there. And then I need to do the bottom. So select all these faces. It's got to be a quicker way of doing this. And then we're going to go to UV planar. There we go. Right. Now, you can see that I've got these weird little things going on here. And what they are, are these bits here. And these need to be cylindrically mapped as well. So I'm going to try and do these hello, at the same time. So let's do UV cylindrical. And that looks okay. And I'm going to try. Not quite. I'm just going to scale this up a little bit. So that it goes to the top and bottom of that. As near as I can get it. just to try and match those up. Because that will make my life easier in Photoshop. Yeah, that looks okay. Right, all I've got to do now is get all this to fit in the, uh, the zero to one space so that I can uh, have this ready. So, I'm gonna click on this and see if it will just give me a favorable layout. Um, Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Let's see what it gives me. Uh, is that something I can work with? I'm not happy with that. I think I'm going to do it manually. So I might not get the most efficient layout doing this. But I like to be in control. Ah, get off. Object to, to, to shell. Okay, so I'll get those three shells and move them in. And I want these to pretty much be the width of my zero to one space. So I think I need to go full screen for this. I want to be able to see what I'm doing. So let's pull that over. And I can go a little bit bigger than that. Brilliant. Okay, I'll move that down to the bottom. Okay, next I'm going to get these two. And 
I can see that I'm going to have fun making these all fit. I think what I'm going to try and do to maximize the space is I'll bring these in around those. But try and give myself a little bit of space. Like that, I think that looks okay. And I've got one more of these up here. And let's just try and get that kind of centered on there. Bring that in. Ah, stop that. Yeah. Okay, so. I'm pretty happy with that. I think I've given myself enough space. So as UV maps go, that's pretty tasty. Okay, what I can see though, that I'm not particularly happy about, is that I've got some that are red. And that means that they're not facing the right way. The normals are in the wrong direction. So we need to flip those normals and then we'll have a beautifully clean UV map, hopefully. So select something red, if you have anything red, and just click on this, and it will flip it around. And basically, just take it from being red to being blue, which is all we need. There we go, right, that is a damn fine UV map. It would probably be a little bit better if my sizes were a bit more consistent, which is really how you're supposed to work, but Lazy. Okay, right, now that UV mapping is done and we're happy with that, in the next step we're going to do the actual baking. So we're going to bake the normal data from the high poly mesh onto the low poly mesh. So I hope you will join me in the next step for that.